Kia ora. Ko Jamie Wahi Paihana Toku Ingoa, Heri Tene no Ngati Fakawe, me Waikato Tainui Hoki, no Tokoro Ahau. I spent majority of my life in Tokoro before moving to Pōneke in 2018 to start my university journey. Tokoro is a small rural town in the South Waikato and has a huge multicultural community. But it wasn't until my move to Pōneke that I realised I was the brown girl. In Tokoro, we are dealing with whānau who have been neglected by every service made to provide us with help. We have been abandoned and left behind. So because of the lack of jobs and quality of education, we often carry a negative reputation outside the four walls protecting our hood. With that in mind, we are dealing with a whole community that has been in survival mode for generations, leaving little room for our success, success story to shine. My parents were teenagers when they had me, which isn't uncommon in my family or where I am from. And after my arrival, my mama and father's world spiralled. And like all good things, they must eventually come to an end. My father spent majority of my life in and out of trouble and spent some time in prison for his actions, leaving my mama to play the role of both mum and dad. My mama worked full time whilst raising my sister and I, and since leaving home and navigating life on my own two feet, I've become even more so grateful for the sacrifices she has made. I'm in awe of all the things this lady has done, and as a wise man once said, there's beauty in the struggle and ugliness in the success. My mother is a true definition of a hustler, and I am so thankful to have inherited that quality from her. We had nothing, but because of this lady, I'm on my way to having everything. I have vivid memories of my father and when he was around, and out of all of them, I can only recall one good story. So growing up with an absent father who had vested involvement within the system came with a whole lot of difficulties I would find later on in life. For the majority of my adolescence, I resented this man. I walked through life knowing the man who was supposed to love and protect me was somewhere living as if I did not exist. But it wasn't until I started my internship with Arapotama Aotearoa that I began to unpack my father's trauma and I began to understand why he had always been so absent. Since finishing high school, I knew I wanted to work in the space I am currently in, somewhere working within our justice system. So I knew I needed to mentally and emotionally prepare myself for the day that I did get to walk in the opposite direction of my father. I knew a lot of hurt would stand beside me in this journey. I just didn't understand how much hurt was truly there. We all know the system isn't built for us Māori and Pacifica to thrive in, but I didn't quite understand the magnitude of that until I entered the space on my own. My father was really only a baby the first time he stepped into a cell. A baby who had a baby waiting for him on the outside. And I'm not trying to, to excuse the mistakes made by this man but a society and systems in place that claim to want better for everyone only cause further harm to individuals and whānau alike. What was supposed to have come of a situation like that? If rehabilitative programs were in place at the time, a sense of identity and belonging could have triggered a want to step up, a want to be better, and a want to be a father. Instead, he was told he was what he was, and that was all that was to come of it. So in turn, that is what he became. I often think back three or so years ago and how I was unable to communicate myself or my feelings on a level I could now. Yet somehow, I expected my father to be able to do so without the same resources. When times were harder and life was a lot more chaotic, I simply couldn't understand, and I never fully will, how hard it is to be a Māori man within our system. Yet for some reason, the system expects us to be able to navigate social structures made to keep us at the bottom. They expect us to speak, but not too loud, to try and to never question them when they are wrong, and for us to get out of the hood, but never give us enough to leave. So every single unfamiliar space I enter, I carry my people and my hood with me. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Everything I do is my ode to Tokoro. Had you told 15 year old Jamie that my Māori, 886 raised, eldest of six, parents who worked multiple jobs to provide, first in her family to finish high school, and first in her family to leave home, at 21 would have graduated from university, I would have laughed and walked away. <laughs> For so much of my childhood and adolescence, society has instilled in my whānau that they were not worthy of aiming high, so the generational curse of feeling unworthy of excellence dawned on me, fueling the fire in me to want better for my whānau, but also motivating me to do something for them. So for as long as I can remember, from before our time, right up until this moment right now, society has told us that we belong to the hood, and that the hood is where we shall reside until the end of our time. And all I have to say to that is no. We have been conditioned to believe that our roots planted here by our tūpuna is something that we should be ashamed of and it's something we should never stand for. But since beginning my journey into Arapautama Aotearoa, a lot of healing has come my way and I have a few people to thank for that. First off, to my probation and case management team that I was a part of, thank you for your patience and thank you for your knowledge. Thank you for fighting the good fight with me. I know I have much to learn, but thank you for taking me on with open and willing arms. <laughs> Tutuputua, thank you for the years of mahi you have put into creating annual cohorts of brown excellence. Today we stand in a room dedicated to a fierce and steadfast cohort filled with kids passionate, passionate about our people. Without you, we all would not have been blessed with a night that celebrates us for simply being us. To my 2021 cohort, Thank you for stepping into these uncomfortable spaces, but doing it with such grace. I'm extremely thankful and proud to see you through on this journey. To my beautiful navigator, your lead. <laughs> Thank you for all you did behind the scenes to make our transition into these roles somewhat easier. Thank you for addressing our concerns. And on a personal level, thank you for being my safe haven. You have listened to me with the intent of being heartfelt as Māori and Pacifica kids, we are often navigating two worlds and trying to find our feet in both. Thank you for understanding me, for nurturing me, and for believing in me. Thank you for the safe space you created for all of us in Pōneke. You are a true testament to the values Tukutua holds dear. You are so valued and you are so loved. And lastly, to my fellow Arapautama cohort. <laughs> I truly do believe our tūpuna wrote our story in the stars and I was blessed with every single one of you. You are our leaders and you are our representation. Thank you for the shoulders I have cried on when I felt out of place. Thank you for allowing me to bounce off you for support, to carry in a space historically our people have not been in. And thank you for your love. I just invite my whānau to etu. And if we could all put our hands together, for them. Take a look at these faces and remember them because these people standing before you, I can promise you will see again. <laughs> My biggest learning from this experience is to never forget where you are from, why you are there, and to remember we are not starting on a blank slate. We're standing on all the other sh shoulders of um, of Kui and Komatua who stood in these roles and spaces before us. To dismiss the work that was done to get us into these spaces is not what we came to do. We came to honour their work and continue into the path of equity. My words will never be enough to thank those who need it most, but I hope my actions are reflections of the love I have received in this lifetime. This was never just for me. This was for my whanau, for my hood, and for all our other brown babies that think getting out of the 886 is just a dream. Just because we are magical people does not mean we are not real. I may stray from the streets of Tokoro, but I will carry it with me wherever I end up. <laughs> e kore taku waka, e pō kere kere i te au, o te moana, ko mahutonga tukupunga. So best believe the hood is on its way to your office. And that I'm bringing... 
and that I'm bringing my tribe with me. The marathon is here, baby, and we're not going anywhere. Kia ora.